Welcome to DIY Easy Crafts and BirdKnifeMaking.com. Today we're going to take a look at the easily do metal etching utilizing a car or automotive battery charger. Now over the years I've done a lot of uh, pretty detailed multi-tone metal etching. Uh, all of the etching that I do, or the majority of, is electro etching. But on today's video we're just going to look at the very basics. Uh, single tone, uh, easy, uh, very easy to do metal etching. It's used most often on uh, knife blades. Uh, so anyway, you got to start with a relief and I use self-adhesive vinyl. I cut out that vinyl on a vinyl cutting machine called a Silhouette Cameo, but you could certainly cut out vinyl by hand. Um, any small pieces in the design that I've imported, I kind of connect so that they become a larger piece and therefore less likely uh, to fall off, lose adhesion and fall off. Uh, if for some reason you don't want to use self-adhesive vinyl, I mean, people tell me you could use nail polish or paint, uh, but the self-adhesive vinyl is pretty inexpensive, and I really found that it works the best. And these uh, vinyl cutting machines are, are not expensive at all, and they, they really uh, cut out some very, very detailed, uh, you know, reliefs. Anyway, getting that vinyl onto the blank, I use a clear transfer film. This is really just clear contact paper from the local hardware store. I use a credit card um, to you know, make sure it's completely adhered to that vinyl. And then I just remove uh, the back of the vinyl. So the vinyl is now sticky. And I'm gonna put this exactly where I want that logo or that design on the blade. I prepped the blade with um, an alcohol wipe just to get off any grease. And you really have one shot at this. Um, you line it up with your registration marks Just place it down, and then I'm going to use the same credit card to make sure that that um, vinyl is really adhered nicely to the to the steel. I can um, remove that transfer film, and then the next step is going to be to weed that vinyl. So you want to remove uh, any areas that you want to get etched. So the vinyl that remains, or the areas that remain uh, covered in vinyl, will end up being shiny on the finished piece. I like to use these uh, 90 degree uh, tweezers. They just make it a little bit easier to grab the vinyl and pull it off. You can also use a little razor knife to get the vinyl started. This particular design is a, um, a pirate flag, it's just gonna be a, a pirate themed chef knife that I'm working on. So this is almost ready to go and, and start to get etched. Uh, what I did was I covered the back of the knife and I also covered the rest of the front of the knife uh, with self-adhesive vinyl. I don't want any of that um, electro, electrolyte solution uh, or electricity to get at areas that I don't want to be etched. Now I use a car battery charger. This is a 12 volt charger. I've got it set at two amps, but you could certainly uh, go out and buy a uh, uh, you know, an etching machine if you wanted to. Uh, any power source that can deliver that same 12 volt 2 amp should work the same. This is my electro uh, etching plate. It's just a flat piece of steel welded onto a piece of tubing which I've drilled and tapped a couple holes into. The negative lead from the car battery charger goes to that plate. The positive lead goes to an alligator clip which is going to get clipped onto the blank or the blade blank. I wrap that electro etch in plate uh, with gauze. Uh, this is a gauze wrap called Curlex um, and whatever um, texture of the cloth that you use, whether it be gauze or whether it be uh, a material of some sort, uh, that uh, woven design is what's going to get transferred onto the blade during the etching. Now you need an electrolyte solution. So for stainless steel I use white wine vinegar and salt. If I was going to be etching um, high carbon steel I would use warm water and salt. For, electric, for stainless steel, I electro etch uh, after heat treating, and for high carbon, I do exactly the opposite. I etch prior to heat treating. I just find I get a, a darker end result that way. With the stainless, it doesn't make any difference, so I do it after. Then I uh, turn the charger on and I apply uh, that electro plate to the area that I want etched. Now I'll do this in 10 to 20 second increments. 
uh, I don't want that vinyl to, uh, to get overheated, the blade to get overheated, and that vinyl to lose its self-adhesion. Note that I've got the blade uh, suspended on two small pieces of wood. That's just so that this uh, piece doesn't end up sitting in a puddle of electrolyte solution. Um, you know, my fear is always I don't want uh, unwanted etching on the back side or on, on another spot on the blade. So I'll, I'll apply um, that gauze wrapped uh, electroplate uh, to my workpiece for 20 seconds at a time. And then after every minute, I'll actually cool that uh, blade uh, in water just to cool down the temperature of the blade itself. I etch for a total of about three to four minutes, depending on how deep I want the etch to be. Usually three to four minutes will, will suffice. It'll give me a nice deep etch that you can actually catch your fingernail on. So just to reiterate that, I only etch for about 20 seconds at a time. I'll do uh, three batches of 20 seconds and every minute I'll cool in fresh water or, or in water. And then after a total of three or four minutes, depending on how deep I want that etch to be, and I can check that just with that uh, that tweezer in a, in a corner of the workpiece. Then I'll remove the vinyl. I can use a little razor knife to remove all of the small pieces of vinyl, just scraping them off. And then I'll clean that up with a little bit of, uh, of sandpaper. I'm using an 800 grit here. Give it a quick rub down. And it's not really until you clean it up with the sandpaper uh, that, that you actually get a look at, at the end result. So this is just a very simple way of adding uh, some designs onto your knife blanks or really almost any metal object. You can really you know, enhance the blade. And it's, a, a, as I said before, a very simple process. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube uh, channel. Uh, stay tuned for an upcoming video. I've got some really cool looking scales or handles uh, that I'm trying to make up uh, to go along with this pirate themed uh, chef knife. Um, anyway, I'd like to give you an invite to join us on our Facebook group, Knives and Knife Making. And if you're interested in making your own knives, check out the book that Jason Northgard and I put out about a year and a half ago called Introduction to Knife Making and that can be found on Amazon.com. If you'd like to see some of my other creations, uh, my website is www.bergknifemaking.com. Thank you very much.